Now we're going to start to be a little bit more systematic in curve sketching. So let's go over a few more examples before we give general guidelines. Let's say we want to sketch the graph of the function f of x given by 2 minus 15x plus 9x squared minus x cubed. It's a polynomial function, so it's defined on the real line, doesn't have any asymptotes. And so we move to the intervals of increase and decrease of the function, and we know that it depends on the sign of the first derivative. So we calculate the first derivative, which in this case is negative 15 plus 18x minus 3x squared. And because we want to know its sign, we factor it. We see that we could factor negative 3, the second factor being x squared minus 6x plus 5, which factors further as x minus 1, x minus 5. So now we want the sign of f prime, so as usual we're going to build a sign table to obtain the sign of f prime. Now we have three factors, negative 3, x minus 5 and x minus 1. In previous examples I also had a constant factor in front and I didn't include it in the chart. The reason was that it was a positive constant and therefore it did not influence the sign of the product. In this case, I'm going to include negative 3 just to remind myself that I'm multiplied by a negative constant. So negative 3, of course, is going to be negative for all x, and the other two factors are going to change sign at 1 and 5, respectively. So as I said, negative 3 is always negative. x minus 5 is 0 at 5. It is positive if x is greater than 5 and negative otherwise x minus 1 is 0 at 1, positive if x is greater than 1, negative otherwise. f prime is the product of these three factors, so on the interval negative infinity 1, all three factors are negative, I have an odd number of negative factors, so I get a negative product. On the interval from 1 to 5, I have two negative factors, so an even number of negative factors, so the product is positive, and on the interval 5 to infinity, I have one negative factor, an odd number of them, so I get a negative product. The interpretation, in terms of increase and decrease, is that the function is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 1, and also on the interval 5 infinity, and is increasing on the interval from 1 to 5. Using the first derivative test, we obtain the local extrema, namely a local minimum at 1, to get the value of this minimum, we plug 1 in the original function. In this case, we get 2 minus 15 plus 9 minus 1, which adds up to negative 5. And there is a local maximum at 5. To get the value of that maximum, I plug x equal 5 in the original function. So we get 2 minus 75 plus 9 times 25 minus 125. All this adds up to 27. So I can include these values in my chart. I have a local minimum of negative 5 and a local maximum of 27. Now we have seen that before we can sketch the graph, we need to know about the concavity of the function, that the intervals of increase and decrease are not enough to know what shape the function has. So we also have seen that the concavity depends on the sign of the second derivative. So we calculate the second derivative. In this case, we differentiate negative 15 plus 18x minus 3x squared, so I obtain 18 minus 6x, and factoring out 6, we have 6 multiplied by 3 minus x. So the second derivative is of the sign of 3 minus x. 3 minus x changes sign at 3, and it is positive if x is less than 3, in other words, to the left of 3. So it is positive on the left of 3 and negative otherwise. In terms of concavity, it means that the function is concave up on the interval from negative infinity to 3 and concave down on the interval from 3 to infinity. Therefore, we have an inflection point at x equals 3. It has first coordinate 3, second coordinate f of 3, and if I plug 3 in the function, I obtain 11. So I can insert the coordinates of my inflection point in the chart 
and now the chart contains all the information I need to sketch the graph. So this is what we move to now. We're going to try to sketch the graph. To sketch this graph, the first thing we do is plot the important points. Well, first we should draw the asymptotes, if any, but there is none. So the important points here are the two local extrema and the inflection point. In this case, we have a local minimum of coordinate 1, negative 5. At that local minimum, we have an horizontal tangent because the derivative is 0. An inflection point of coordinate 3, 11. And a local maximum, where we have again an horizontal tangent of coordinates 5, 27. Then we are going to connect these points following the information we have on increase and decrease and concavity. On the interval from negative infinity to 1, the function is decreasing and concave up. So we obtain something like that. One additional point that we could have is uh, to observe that at 0, the function takes a value 2, which of course is confirmed on this graph. On the interval from 1 to 3, the function is now increasing, but still concave up. So we obtain this type of shape. On the other end, from 3 to 5, the function is still increasing, but turns concave down. So connecting my inflection point to the maximum in a concave down fashion, I obtain this piece of the curve. And from 5 to infinity, the function is still concave down, but decreasing. So I can add a decreasing concave down piece of the curve. And now I have sketched, sketched the graph of the function.